2020 is the first year Jane wouldn't be home for her birthday, which is January 2nd. In this episode of the I Can't See You podcast, I'll tell you about my trip to New York City on my own to celebrate with her and a couple other things that I did while I was up there. From Studio C, welcome to the I Can't See You podcast with David. He can't see, but he's got a lot to say and a face for radio. Hello there, and welcome to episode 56 of the I Can't See You podcast. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. And as I mentioned in the intro, I traveled up to New York City to celebrate Jane's 23rd birthday. And my main reason for wanting to go up there was I just envisioned her working late and getting on the subway and going home and having ramen on her birthday, and I just didn't want that to happen. So uh, I talked to Liz and, and we talked about it for a little bit and I decided that I would go up to New York City uh, on my own because uh, the 2nd of January is the first day back of school uh, where Liz teaches and she just wouldn't be able to take off that day. It just It's mayhem usually, especially since it's a uh, day where there are all the kids in the class. Um, in Liz's classroom, there are uh, some three-day kids and then some five-day kids. And uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the three-dayers. And obviously, every day of the week are the five-dayers. So uh, it's just a full house uh, the first day back this year because it was on a Thursday. Um, so, you know, when we talked about going up there and she said she couldn't go, I told her, well, you know, I'd like to go. And because Jane hadn't taken off, I didn't have to rush up there first thing in the morning to spend the day. Uh, and it was a little bit easier on me because it gave me time to get into Philadelphia and then get from Philadelphia to New York City, which I all did. Uh, well, I took the bus to the train in Swarthmore and then the train in Swarthmore to another train in Philadelphia. Uh, I did travel up on Amtrak. And um, I should mention that... Um, it's not, sometimes I go via Amtrak, sometimes I go via, uh, Greyhound. I, I just, the, the last couple of times that I had done the bus, it was just brutal. Um, again, as I think I mentioned when I did those, you know, if I were in a third world country, uh, you know, where there are chickens running around on the bus and we'd say, oh, look how fun that is. But, you know, in this country with, you know, parts of the bus clanging around and, uh, and things like that. It just wasn't something that I wanted to do. Uh, although I did have a little bit of extra time, uh, this time, uh, going up because I was going up, uh, you know, for the end of the day, Jane, Jane usually works. Well, she's scheduled to work until six. Typically she is, um, uh, she stays until between six thirty and seven o'clock. Um, you know, depending on how much he's got going on. And, um, uh, so I, I took the bus to the train and, and, and that's another hairy issue. I've taken, I've tried to take the bus to the train before and that's, it's just a very short drive. If I wanted, I could walk it. Uh, the problem is, as, as I think I've mentioned, um, you know, I've got psoriatic arthritis and while my feet and legs hurt a little bit, my hands are very bad. So to go to the train station walking, uh, where I've got a whole day in front of me and I knew I'd be doing a lot of walking. Uh, it turns out I ended up uh, walking somewhere around 18,500 or 600 steps uh, for the day once I got home. Um, so it was, um, I just I just th thought it would be better to take the bus. The, the problem is I've waited for the bus before right outside of our uh, apartment building. And, you know, I've been there for 15 minutes and nothing has ever come. So I'm always a little bit leery, especially when I have to catch another train once I'm in Philadelphia. If I'm just going into Philadelphia, it's not as critical, although sometimes I guess it could be. Um, but had I missed the train from Swarthmore to Philadelphia, it really would have created an issue because, you know, I don't know, ticket tickets were kind of scarce because I did it not last minute, but fairly last minute because... Uh, it was something that, you know, first I had to talk to Liz, we talked about it and then we ran it by Jane because I didn't want to surprise Jane if she was going to have, uh, some things going on with her friends. So 
once all that went down, I ended up making the reservations and um, finding <laughs> finding the cheapest way on Amtrak up and back. And that kind of changed. It, it was kind of funny, especially on the trip home. Uh, the trip going up was at a good time. Uh, it got me into New York City just before rush hour. And um, I was happy with that. But when I initially did the scheduling, it looked like I was going to have to come back on a later train, which could have created some trouble coming home from Philadelphia because the, the, the trains from Center City, Philadelphia to Swarthmore only run hourly uh, after a certain time, 6 or 7 p.m. And um, after the midnight train, there's one somewhere around 12, 12.05 a.m., that's it. So then I would have had to find a different way home and, um, again, didn't want to have to pay for an Uber um, coming home. And, you know, at that point, Liz is certainly asleep, especially uh, she would be after her first day back um, with the kids at uh, at school. So uh, I took the train in. I got I got to the. There were no issues this time with the bus, so I had no trouble. I my chair is making all sorts of noise now. Not quite sure what's happening there, but uh, I will roll on. Um, so when I got to Philadelphia, uh, after I got off the uh, the SEPTA regional rail. I had a little bit of time, so I wanted to buy my ticket coming home. I didn't have one thing we didn't think of was uh, we didn't have any, we didn't go and get money. And I typically don't usually carry cash. Um, you know, if I'm with Liz, Liz will sometimes have some cash on her, but we typically don't carry cash and either use a debit or a credit card to pay for things. Um, just because there's that record of it, you know, with cash, I've always been a little bit leery of using the wrong note or getting the wrong change. Um, so I'm a little more comfortable using a credit card because that's something we can fight. If, if I'm due a $10 bill back <laughs> and I only get a five, you know, that that's on me and I can't, you know, I can't do anything about it. And unfortunately I thought of this after Liz had gone to sleep on, uh, January 1st, so um, I was a little concerned on what I was going to do. Uh, it turns out she had $3, and we have a, uh, uh, our, our uh, condo unit, our building uh, has washers on each floor that accept quarters. That's how we usually pay. And fortunately, we had a big bowl of quarters that I could, I could dip in and take the 50 cents out for my $3.50 ticket. Of course, that doesn't get me home, though. That just gets me into Philadelphia. In uh, the way SEPTA works they have train stations at each at each stop. Problem is, they're only open till like 11.15 or 11.30 in the morning. So my train into Philadelphia was after that, so I had to buy the ticket on, law, uh, on, on the train. Um, and that, the only way you could pay is cash. So as soon as I got off the train in Philadelphia, I went over to the uh, ticket booth at 30th Street Station and wanted to buy a couple of tickets um, so I could A, get home, and then B, I wanted to have one that I could keep in my wallet for another time if I had to go into Philadelphia when the station there was closed. And also, when you pay in any of the Philadelphia stations, um, you can pay with a card, whether it's a debit or a credit, so there's no need to pay with the cash there. So <laughs> it was just kind of funny because I thought that would be the easiest thing and it became a difficult thing because, you know, when I told the uh, person who was selling me the tickets that I, I you know, I, I gave him my credit card. He said, oh, you, you do it out there. And I said, OK, you know, and I started feeling around and I felt the unit. He said, does it have a chip? I said, yes. And I said, OK, you know, should I put it in here? He's like, well, just give me the card and I can run it for you. I said, OK. Well, you know, meanwhile, the line is backing up behind me because it's, you know, it's taking forever. I had to sign something. I had to sign the slip. And, um, you know, I, I felt a little bad because I, you know, I could hear the people queuing up behind me. And I thought, you know, geez, that was supposed to be easier, but it certainly wasn't. Um, but I got my tickets. Uh, I was comfortable now. I had a, I had a way, <laughs> I had a way home out of Philadelphia. And uh, so now I still had a little more time. So, you know, I went over, I used the bathroom and, you know, I shot a video that I then posted on Facebook and again, all my socials at David Benj. So facebook.com slash David Benj. 
um, Instagram.com slash David Benj and so forth. And of course, everybody knows Twitter dot com slash David Bench and YouTube, I, I should add. Um, and again, uh, if you hadn't heard, we do have the podcast on YouTube. It is just audio. Uh, it is not video, but uh, the podcast, the last six or seven of them uh, started popping up there. Uh, we were able to get that done. Uh, you know, so I shot this video and then I see this line um, not too far from where I was shooting the video. And I thought, oh, I wonder if this is the New York train. So I went to where I thought the uh, person who would uh, work for Amtrak would be and, you know, and there was no one there. And um, I heard somebody talking and I asked them, it was just, you know, just another passenger. I said, is this the train to New York? And, and she said, yes. And I thought, OK, um, I better go get back in the line again. No one from Amtrak is there. Usually um, when someone from Amtrak is there, they'll say, oh, here, you can just come stand up here. <clears throat> And, um, so there was no one there and, and, you know, I was texting with Jane at that point and she said, Oh, just, just go ask them. They'll let you move up front. You don't have to wait in that line. I said, you know, I want to try, let me see what happens if I do. And, um, you know, so I'm waiting in line and Jane is texting me. She's like, you should go up front because you might have trouble finding a seat. And, and to be honest, that is one of, one of the things that I worry about when I get on a train, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to walk in to try and sit down somewhere and someone's going to be there. Um, the other option, of course, is I hit them on the ankles or on the leg with my cane and, you know, they get mad at that. So uh, always a little bit of an issue, I think. Um, uh, but I thought, you know, let me try it. You know, again, it would be, you know, more things to talk about, <laughs> more things to talk about with you uh, on the podcast. Uh, so just as I got done texting Jane that someone from Amtrak came over to me and said, do you, do you need a red cap assistance? I said, no, I think I'm good. And, um, I, have, I always like to, to try and do it on my own. I am not quite sure why I, you know, it, it just kind of feels like cheating if I have someone else help me, obviously, if I'm having difficulty, you know, by all means help out. Um, but I want to do it on my own. And, uh, you know, so I waited and again, the line was pretty long. Uh, it wasn't as long as the line, uh, when Jane went back to New York, um, after my mom's funeral. Uh, now she happened to get in the line early, but after uh, I said goodbye, when she was going down to the platform, I had gone to the bathroom to go to the bathroom before I jumped on my train home. And the line went, the line was easily another, you know, 25 to 50 people long, uh, longer than it was that day that I was going. So uh, it was, uh, you know, and again, that was before the holidays. So I'm sure people were going up to go to see, uh, see the city all decked out for Christmas. Um, you know, so I waited in the line and, you know, we started moving and finally I get down to the platform. And one thing that I remembered when, um, Liz and Jane and I were in London a few years ago when we were taking Jane to uh, school, when she did her abroad over there, we waited at a you know, the middle of the platform when we were at the Gatwick station and there was no room left on the car. As the train pulled away, we noticed at the very ends there was, you know, the cars were almost empty. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to keep walking. And I hear a couple of people in front of me walking. And I, you know, fortunately, uh, and I'll talk more about this in a little bit. Um, you know, I hear that the person in front of me had a suitcase and he's dragging it and I could hear that or she, I don't know if it was a girl or a guy. Um, and as I hear them get on the train, I thought, okay, let me try. <clears throat> and I apologize again, still, still a little, uh, got some little something going on and a little bit of congestion. Um, so I get on the train and I find a seat. In fact, I find, I, I got the, the handicap seat. Um, not that if someone else came on and really wanted it, I would, I would have given it up for them. Um, the beauty of the handicap seat is a, it's very close to the bathroom, which is very convenient and easy that I would feel okay going to the bathroom without taking my cane because, <laughs> because there's no place in the bathroom to put my cane and it just kind of flops around. Um, so I would have been, you know, I could have felt my way to the bathroom. I was that close to it, you know, because there's a luggage rack on one side and, and I could have just, you know, uh, gone that way. Um, but the other reason there's no chair in front. So, you know, you can stretch your legs and I could put my bag in front of me without it blocking my feet and things like that. 
So I actually had sent Jane a, uh, a selfie. It was, it was the first of many selfies that day, <laughs> which I, I kind of went selfie crazy, blind selfie crazy that day. Um, but I said, look, I, you know, I, I got a seat and I'm not even sitting next to anybody. And she's like, you're sitting in the seat. You're not even sitting in the window seat. And, um, I'm always afraid to sit in the window seat because, um, <laughs> I've banged my head more times than I care to talk about. And probably more times than I can even remember. Um, cause a couple of times I hit it hard on their luggage rack. It's above the seats because it's, uh, it is fairly low. So if I were to stand straight up, I would, you know, most likely bang my head pretty hard. Uh, so I did that and it wasn't an issue. Uh, and then I got to, so took the train, no problems. We got into New York in the, the allotted time. I was actually kind of, um, kind of surprised at how quickly we got there. And, um, I don't know if there was, um, I, I don't know if there was, you know, we only did two stops. I, you know, I know we stopped at Trenton and we stopped at, at Newark, uh, sorry, Newark, I, I believe Newark, New Jersey and Newark, Delaware. I always forget which is which, but anyway, you know, the city in North Jersey. And I got off the train and, um, uh, you know, in New York city and it wasn't really a, uh, you know, I never know where to go. So I usually just follow the masses and, um, and again, um, I listened for someone's shoes. I listened for a suitcase, whatever that helps me follow someone where, um, you know, I don't have to try and strain and look and see what I'm looking for. Um, now sometimes if it's somebody that's walking too slow, I, you know, I, I you know, I, I just go around them because I, I don't like to walk slow and, um, you know, I, uh, uh, I just follow, you know, try to, you know, feel my way through and, uh, you know, figure out what I need to, to, to do. Um, so I, you know, get to the, uh, to the main level of the station and it's pretty busy because it's now, you know, three 30 in the afternoon and, uh, you know, people are coming and going. It's again, the second of January. So people are still in town from new years and, um, you know, I thought, okay, here's what I have to do. I've got to figure out, I've got to get outside and figure out where exactly I am. And, you know, and then I'll go and do the things that I wanted to do. When I initially decided I was going to go to New York, I thought, you know, I'm going to have a couple of hours before Jane gets done work. What am I going to do? And my first thought was I'm going to go to either the Metropolitan Museum of Art or the Museum uh, of Modern Art. And the Museum of Modern Art is on 53rd Street. So when I was planning all this, I thought, okay, I'm going to get out, uh, get off the train at 42nd Street. Well, I was wrong. And Jane told me about that the day before or the night before, after I had already had, you know, made my plans up and figured here's how I'm going to walk from 42nd Street over to, um, to the Museum of Modern Art. And she's like, dad, you, you get off, you know, at MSG at Penn Station and that's at 34th. And I'm like, oh, so then I started looking and figuring that, um, you know, I, you know, if I did that, you know, I could take the subway part of the way and then I'd still have to walk a good chunk. So I thought, well, if I walk it, it's going to take me a half an hour, maybe a little bit more because by the time I get started, it's going to, you know, rush hour is going to start. And, you know, just the foot traffic in New York in general is usually pretty busy, but, you know, add the, you know, add, add folks getting out of work, it's going to make it that much more busy. And my, uh, my alternative plan, <laughs> which is, which is something that I, you know, I wanted to do, I, I would have preferred to go to, to one of the museums, but I, I, this wasn't terrible. And I, I've, I've always, and I've, I've talked about it before going to B and H photo. I thought, you know, I could go to B and H photo and see how I could do it on my own. And, um, and also how fun would it be to walk around, you know, B&H photo looking at camera gear with a white cane and people giving me, you know, a double take, Hey, that, why is that guy with the white cane looking at, you know, cameras? Um, in all fairness, I was, I wanted to look at not only camera stuff, it was specifically GoPro, which some of them of course don't even have a screen. So, so nothing to look at. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and also podcast equipment. So I thought, you know, the night before when Jane, 
and I were talking and she told me I'm going to be a few blocks further south. I thought, you know what, B&H is just around the corner, so I'll go there. So once I figured out, once I got my bearings in Penn Station, you know, of course, I had to use the bathroom again because I, I don't particularly like to go on the train because it's, you know, <laughs> going, to, going to the bathroom could be messy to begin with um, when you can't see what you're aiming at. Um, uh, you know, I thought it'd be much better to go once I got off if I didn't have to go while I was on, which I didn't. So uh, I found the men's room. You know, I knew where the ladies' room was once I got my bearings, and um, I walked over to that. And then once I got into that area, I asked someone, I said, is the men's room close? And um, they said, okay. You know, the way I was pointing, you know, the guy said, uh, you know, just keep walking the way you're facing and then hang a left. I'll tell you when to turn left. And uh, he told me to turn left, and I used my cane, and I actually had tapped a, um, some sort of, some sort of uh, uh, barrier, and I took another step, and then and then I went straight and I was good. Uh, so once I came out of the bathroom, I thought, okay, how am I going to figure out where I'm going above ground? And it's kind of like I did at the Penn Museum. I used my, um, my phone and seeing AI. And um, I thought I'd try seeing AI. I wasn't sure how good it would work because when it comes to signs, sometimes they're fairly high up or, you know, I don't necessarily know where there are, where there are signs. And um, seeing AI is really not made for a distance like that, I don't think. But, you know, I'm telling you now it worked for me in the station and it worked for me at Penn uh, Museum. And in a second, I'll tell you how it worked for me uh, at B&H Photo. Um, so I get to the stairs that say, I, I want to say it said 8th Ave and 33rd Street. And so I go up there and I wasn't sure which was which because on... Apple on, on maps on the iPhone, which is the Apple um, map program or app, um, it actually, you can drag your finger around and it will tell you where the streets are and everything else. Google Maps, which I usually prefer, isn't, isn't like that. You know, you, you can drag your finger all over the screen and you're just going to hear, you know, beeping sounds. Whereas, you know, when you hit a road on, you drag your finger around Apple Maps, you touch something and it'll say, you know, 8th Avenue, you know, runs this way and it's one way, or it runs both ways and it, it runs north and south and it's two ways. Um, so it's very cool. And as well as it will give um, larger places that have little, you know, you know that have, the, that are notated like, you know, Penn Station or Madison Square Garden or whatever, it will say Madison Square Garden. Um, so uh, I got up there and I wasn't sure and I asked someone and and the person said, yeah, this is 33rd Street. You're facing 33rd Street. And I said, all right, so that's 8th Avenue over there. And he said, yes. Well, so then I thought, okay, I've got to make, I knew when I came up, I'd have to make a right to go down 33rd to 9th and then walk up 9th to B&H, which is um, just around, uh, uh, just across 34th, I believe. Um well, something happened and I ended up going the wrong way. And I walked, instead of walking to 9th, I walked to 7th. I'm not sure if that was on me or if that was on the guy that was telling me what the street was. But I eventually made my way and um, took my first New York selfie <laughs> in front of B&H Photo. Um, I, I just actually looked at it before I hit record on this and it came out okay. It's not great because... The B and H signs are pretty high up, so I used um, I took it vertically, which I, I don't typically like. I will if there's something that's higher up, like I did again at the Penn Museum, you know, last month, um, you know, in front of a totem pole. Um, but I usually like I usually like to do um, you know landscape, um, and um, which most of my selfies that day were landscape, and I'll put a few of them on the uh, uh, on the show notes page. Uh, I can't see you dot com slash zero five six. And remember, I can't see you. I C A N T C U sounds like a lot longer than seven letters, but it's only seven letters. Uh, so I make my way in and I, I look for the entrance to uh, to B and H. And I, you know, fortunately, somebody had gone in just as I was getting close to where the door was. So I, I kind of figured out that was it. And when I walked in, I noticed there was someone there standing right near the entrance uh, it turns out he was security, and I, I asked him a question about something in the store, and he said, I don't know, I'm security, you know, 
he then points, go talk to that lady in the red sweater, blazer, vest, whatever it was. And I'm like, okay, I can't see her, but you know, I'll make my way that way. And, um, so I made my way straight in, straight into the store. And I finally, finally found someone that worked there, whether it was the lady this guy was talking about or not. And I asked her, I said, you know, I'm looking for GoPro uh, stuff. Where is that? And she said, okay, um, it's on the next level up, you know, take the escalator, she said. And again, pointing, um, go down uh, this way and um, turn left at the ATM. And I thought, okay, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to see the ATM, um, but I'll try. And uh, she's like, do you want me to take you? I'm like, no, no, you stay here. I'll, I'll see if I can make it. I'll, f I'll figure it out. And I did figure it out because just about everybody that was heading that way was making the left where there was an opening. I, I don't, I don't, I never saw the ATM, um, you know, and I figured, okay. And then as I took a few more steps, I heard the escalator. So I walked a little further and, and had to do a 180 and go up the escalator. Uh, when I got to the next level though, it was, you know, it seemed like there were people were playing video games, which I didn't remember B&H having. Uh, and I was a little confused and I started looking around and again, I pulled my phone out using, um, seeing AI, uh, just to see what was in that area. And there were video games and, and some other things. Um, so I just kept walking and, you know, then I had someone come up to me and she said, can I help you out? And I said, yeah, I said, I'm looking for, um, the GoPro gear, um, you know, where is that at? And, um, you know, she took me actually over to the section instead of just pointing or saying anything, you know, Hey, it's here, it's there, whatever. She actually took me over there. And, um, obviously is, you know, much more helpful than somebody telling me or pointing because uh, again, you can point and, and, or just say it's over there. And I, you know, I have no idea what you're doing. Um, you know, sometimes I can tell you're pointing because, uh, you know, I'll hear somebody move or, um, you know, I'll see their arm go up. Um, uh, you know, listen, when, um, when I have to sign something, I have to put a finger down on a page to show where the, where the line is. If I don't have one of those boxes that I, that I carry with me. And then I have to figure out where my finger and the tip of the pen are. And that, that could take me a minute or two. So, you know, pointing just doesn't work for me and, you know, and, and, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, so I found the GoPro area and I just started, sorry about that, hit the microphone. Uh, I, I just start scanning what's on the shelves and, um, guy came over to me, said, can I help you? And I said, yeah. Um, you know, I'm looking for, you know, I, I had some questions about a couple of accessories that GoPro was coming out with. And, um, I also asked him about the GoPro eight. Um, and, you know, he took me over to the GoPro eight and he, you know, pulled it out and he put it in my hands and he, you know, he started telling me about it. And, um, it's, you know, there's 12 voice controls, which obviously for someone like me, a voice control is great. Um, you know, mostly set, you know, the camera is mostly set on, uh, autofocus anyway. And, you know, so we were talking about that and I asked him if, if there's an app that you can control the camera with, with which there is. So again, assuming the app is accessible, uh, it would make the camera easier for me to operate. And, and again, I'm looking at GoPro because those, uh, video glasses that I had the Rincon, uh, I went to, I was going to take them with, uh, on this trip. And, you know, when I put them on the night before pretty late at night, they, they weren't, even though I had charged them the week before or two weeks before they weren't charged, um, so I, you know, I figured I'm not going to take these. Um, I figured I would just, uh, just go without the video or use my phone if I wanted video, which, you know, when I did video, I used my phone. So I talked more to the guy from B&H and I asked him his name because he was very helpful and he spent a lot of time with me and I was really happy with that. I had asked him about a, I guess you would call it a selfie stick. Uh, GoPro has something coming out in the next month or two that I saw some guy demoing um, on YouTube. And I thought, oh, that looks kind of cool. And, I, and they had some other, like I said, some other accessories that I was interested in that also aren't out yet. But he showed me uh, a third party knockoff of a, of a selfie stick that is very similar to 
uh, the GoPro model. So, you know, we were playing around with that for a little bit and I thanked him. And then I asked him about the podcasting gear, where that was. And, um, he told me, and so I made my way downstairs and I wasn't a hundred percent sure cause it's been a few years since I had been, uh, to B and H. And so I get downstairs and I'm kind of wandering around and finally somebody sees me, somebody that works there sees me and he's like, what are you looking for? And I, and I said, I'm looking for, you know, pro audio, you know, podcasting stuff, basically, you know, mixers and mics and stuff like that. And again, I happen to be facing the right way. He said, you're facing right towards it, you know, um, continue to walk that way and, uh, and you'll find it. And, um, I got to that section and I found the microphones and I found some mixers, um, uh, but I never found the couple of items that I wanted to see and actually feel, uh, while I was there. And, uh, I thought there was someone there that worked there. Um, and I was very close to him, but I didn't, I didn't ask. And, um, before I had a chance to go back and ask, and, and again, I was, I was dragging my phone, you know, in front of me, well, actually off to the side, trying to read the signs of what was in the, these cases, uh, because this stuff was in, um, glass cases, uh, that somebody had to get out for you. Um, you know, and it's telling me this microphone or this mixer, but I wasn't finding, um, either of the mixers that I wanted. One is called a um, Zoom H6, which is a portable uh, recorder uh, that, you know, has all the uh, audio controls on it. Uh, and um, the other one is called a, uh, I believe it's called Rode Podcaster or Rodecaster or something like that. Rode is the name of the company that makes it. I believe they're Australian. Uh, I will link to them in the show notes. And of course, those links will be to Amazon and they will be affiliate links so if you want one of those things, go ahead and buy it. I really appreciate it if you would use those links that I put on the show notes page because I do earn a little commission and uh, it's very helpful. I appreciate it. Uh, but no one ever came over to me there and I spent probably 20 minutes to a half an hour looking around in the section. And finally, I was just, I got so hot um, temperature wise that I just had to go back outside. And And at that point, I was glad with my, my choices, you know, I didn't know what I was going to wear because I hate wearing the big bulky, uh, Eddie Bauer, you know, like winter jacket. Um, for one reason, I have a backpack with me because when I go on my own, I always carry a spare cane, one of those, um, ones that, uh, kind of folds up. And, um, you know, cause if I break my cane while I'm out and about, you know, I'm kind of screwed if I'm on my own because I, I'd have no way of getting anywhere. It, you know, that would be absolutely terrifying uh, to do that. So uh, while I was at Swarthmore waiting for the train, I was kind of questioning my wearing of uh, just a, you know, heavy duty hoodie uh, as opposed to my winter coat. But once I was in B&H and then got back outside after B&H, uh, I was happy. So I left B&H not, not seeing what I wanted to in the podcast section, um, or I guess I should say the pro audio section. Um, I then figured, you know, my next stop was going to be Bryant Park. Um, one of my favorite stops during the spring. Um, around the holidays, they do this thing called Winter Village. And they have an ice rink there. And they have all these little um, kiosks and stores, tiny stores. I mean, you know, 100 square feet type of places. Uh, they sell Christmas ornaments and food and all sorts of things. And it's just, it's just really nice walking around there. So I knew I was going to go from B&H, which, like I said, was at 9th and 34th, I believe, or 33rd. Uh, and, um, and I was going to walk over to Bryant Park, which is at, uh, uh, in between 5th and 6th, uh, you can get in and, uh, on, uh, 39th or 40th. Um, right behind the public library. And as I've mentioned before, underneath Bryant Park is where all the books are for the public library. Um, so I made my way over there. And, you know, as I mentioned before, while in the train station, um, I try to stay out of people's way and while I'm walking on the sidewalk. And sometimes it's difficult when there's a lot of people, I can't, you know, extend my arm all the way with my cane and really sweep back and forth. I have to do what's called a pencil grip and kind of just keep it right in front of me, kind of just alerting the people who are coming towards me. Hey, I can't see. And, um, you know, knowing that there's so many people on the street that, uh, I don't want to start whacking ankles or get, 
you know, get my cane. A, a lot of times if you, you know, if I have my, my cane extended, you know, can go between somebody's legs and trip them up, you know, kind of like, you know, if you're watching hockey, you know, a lot of times you go for the puck and somebody puts their stick between the guy's legs, try and get the puck away and then ends up tripping them. Uh, so I don't obviously want to, <laughs> I don't want to trip anybody up. So, you know, I do the pencil grip and just try and stay, at, you know, in between the, you know, behind the person I'm, I'm following as long as, again, as long as they're walking at a decent speed. Um, but I found a, uh, there, there was a lady that was walking that, I, I don't know if she had boots on, something with a very hard sole or heel. And she was walking at a great speed. And so because I was following her, and she was going at this at a good speed that I wanted to go. I, you know, I was kind of weaving through traffic with her and she, I don't know, it might've freaked her out at some point because at that point I was, you know, tapping with my cane and sweeping with my cane. So, uh, so hopefully she didn't get, uh, didn't get freaked out, but I followed her for a couple of, um, as Jane calls them, avenue blocks in New York city, an avenue block, like from eighth to seventh, for example, is a lot longer than going from 33rd to 34th street. It's, I don't know if it's double. I don't know if it's more than double, but it's a, it's a lot longer. It's a, it's a much longer walk, um, going, going an Avenue block as opposed to a, um, a street block, um, you know, from, like I said, 33rd to 34th and so on. So I got, um, you know, and, and again, around the Times Square area, um, which, I tried to avoid, I, I tried to go down. I, I think I went down 34th. I, in fact, I did go down 34th street cause I, t <laughs> I took a selfie in front of Macy's. I didn't realize it was Macy's until uh, we got there and the sidewalk was packed and I happened to be across the street. And so I thought, Oh, I'm going to take a selfie there. And I did. And, um, and again, I can just imagine the people's faces as they see this guy with the white cane, you know, taking a selfie and, um, and for the most part, I have to tell you, they come out pretty good. Um, I should post a video on how I actually do it because it's kind of fun um, the way I do it. And kind of people think, you know, people think that it's not ingenious, but, you know, it's a clever way to do it when you can't see. Um, the only thing, it has to be somewhat quiet, which, of course, in New York City, it's not always quiet. So, um but I'll talk about the selfies a little more uh, in a minute. But I, I walked down. I figured I'm going to walk down uh, Fifth. And uh, I got to Fifth. And actually, I think I, I got to, yeah, I got to Fifth. And I then, you know, turned left because I had to head up towards the park and to the library. And just as I crossed over um, 34th Street, I hear a guy talking about uh, the Empire State Building and he had coupons. And I thought, oh, the Empire State Building, I knew I was close. Um, and, you know, again, it was the day of the selfie that day. And I thought, what great selfies would I get from up there? And I knew it would be very cool because I knew the lights on the buildings were on because it was, you know, not quite dusk. The sky was still lighter than dusk, I think. You know, I don't, I, I'm not sure if the sun was still, you know, out that you could, you know, see the sun itself, but the, it was still light enough that you could see the sky. And I thought, what a great time of day to, to go up there. And I, you know, I pulled to the side, I walked to the side next to the building uh, to check the time. And when I did that, I realized if I did that, I wouldn't get to Bryant Park. And I really wanted to go to Winter Village because, you know, that's only there. It's there from like November. I think they packed it up on, um, they packed it up sometime, I want to say uh, January 5th was the last day for most of it. I think the ice rink is still there until March. So I made my way there and um, to Bryant Park, realizing that, okay, I've got to, uh, I've got to do, you know, Winter Village and, you know, I'll have to take a rain check on the Empire State Building because I've never been up there. And I, I always thought that would be very cool to go up. But I got over to the park and... Um, it's interesting how some blocks there was so much traffic, foot traffic, and in other blocks there wasn't on my way uh, over to Bryant Park. And once I got there, I was kind of surprised it wasn't as packed as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, when Jane and I were there the last time, which was, uh, I guess, November of 2018, uh, it was pretty packed and, you know, tough to maneuver at some spots. 
But on January 2nd, um, not so much. So uh, again, I was kind of happy and pleased that I was able to maneuver through because there are a lot of obstacles. There's little tables and chairs. Um, and if you've seen some of the selfies that I took there um, over the summer or in previous summers and springs, um, you know, little like cafe table type things, um, you know, so you have to avoid those. And because they have these little booths and kiosks and things that need electric, um, you know, there's these, um, they're almost like speed bumps. And, and sometimes they're a little bit trickier to maneuver over and through and around than, um, than others. But, uh, you know, I took a couple of selfies. I tried to get a picture where I took one, I, I guess it was last summer, um, when Jane, when I went up with Jane, when she went to an interview, uh, I took one with the library in the background. It just, it's, it's so different. It's, you know, you know, obviously there's Christmas lights up the, um, you know, there's, uh, the ice rink it's, you know, in the summer, it's just a big grassy area, uh, that is bordered by, you know, basically like a, uh, like sidewalk or cement and, and planters with trees and other plants and, uh, and stuff like that. So it's, it's just so different. Um, you know, it's just very cool though. Uh, so I walked around there for a bit, took my picture, took a selfie in front of the ice rink, took a picture of the people skating at the ice rink. Uh, and again, when I take pictures like that, I'm just hoping for the best. And, you know, I look at them on my computer when I come home to see how good they are. Or if it's a selfie that I want to make sure um, I get a good picture, I will text it to Liz or Jane. And obviously Jane, since she's working, I couldn't do, uh, I couldn't do that, but, um, I uh, uh, stayed there for a little bit and then figured, okay, it was around 20 after five or so. I thought, you know, I'm pretty warm. I'm kind of thirsty. I, th I figured I'll make my way down to Madison Avenue. Um, you know, so I left the park uh, on the north side. I came in on the south side. Uh, I guess, like I said, it's either 39th or 40th. And I left on the north side, which I believe is 42nd Street, might be 41st. Um, and hung a right and then crossed over Fifth Avenue uh, down to Madison and then a left on Madison. And I knew a block before Jane's office uh, at 350 Madison, I knew there was a, um, maybe it's not even a block, um, there's a Starbucks. Um, it is probably the smallest Starbucks I've been into other than uh, the Starbucks that are in Target or, uh, you know, those... Uh, like along the highway in the, uh, in the rest stops where there's, you know, you know, six or seven places to eat. Um, you know, this place is really, really small. Um, you know, so I went in there and I grabbed an iced tea and, um, and, uh, I went to, uh, I went to Jane's office, which I, again, wasn't quite sure of, didn't see any signs or numbers that had the, the address on the outside of the building, so I drank my iced tea for a little bit. And while I was drinking my iced tea, I got a call from my friend, Alex. I talked to him for a little bit. Uh, and then I took another selfie in front of the building and I, I texted it to Jane. I said, is this your building? And she said, yes. I said, um, uh, can I come up or do you know what the story is? She said, let me talk to my boss who is Kate and, uh, I'll find out. So I went inside and stood in, in the, uh, the outside lobby and uh, just waited. And, uh, you know, around 10 or 15 minutes later, Jane came down and uh, she works, the company that she works for is called HL Group. And um, they do PR for uh, uh, beauty, which Jane does uh, fashion. And I think she also said they have a, they have a small team that does uh, home stuff like home, home goods and things like that. Um, meaning stuff for your home, not the store home goods. <laughs> I, um, again, they, it's a PR firm, um, HL group. If you want to look them up, I, I don't know if they have a website or not. Uh, so I went upstairs, uh, and I was surprised at, um, the office. Um, when I had talked to someone about doing, um, web development, uh, for digital graphics, and I met with him, uh, you know, he's an Indian, uh, Indian firm. He happened to be in Philadelphia, you know, on some other business and wanted to meet with me. And when I looked up his company online and I, I, you know, it was basically like a small room, probably the size of my living room and dining room here in our apartment. And it just has rows of desks, 
you know, I, I don't even know, I'd hesitate to call them desks, more like tables with, you know, computers every three or four feet. And, you know, that, and that's, that's how Jane's office was set up. It's very, very open concept, you know, telephone, computer, a little bit of space, telephone, computer, a little bit of space. And, um, you know, not very private. And I, I have, I, I don't know if I've developed this or if I've always have had this. Um, when some, there's some other noise going on, it, it drives me crazy and I can't concentrate. It will, that's why I have to record when no one else is home. Um, you know, I tried to record, uh, I, I don't know if it was the last podcast or the one before, and Jacob was home in his room which is directly across from my office. And he was typing and he types very hard and very loud, even though the door to my office was closed and the door to his room was closed. It was just, it was, it was distracting. It wasn't like you would be able to hear it on the mic. It was just distracting. And because I really don't use any kind of notes, um, you know, to, to a large degree, it would knock my train of thought completely crazy that I'd forget to tell you something or uh, something like that. So I just couldn't do it. And, and so working there, I, you know, there were like seven Jacobs all around me. You know, I heard somebody two rows over typing. It sounded like a machine gun. Uh, they were going, it was so loud and so fast. And, you know, then there were some others and, um, you know, I just can't imagine when, you know, someone, you have to talk to someone on the phone, you know, everybody hears everything. And, um, I, I just, I don't think I could work like that. I just, um, you know, I need the walls and I need, you know, even, even in a cubicle, I don't think I could do it because you still hear all that other stuff. Um, but it was nice to see the office and now I have a, an idea when she tells me what's going on and I was, you know, I got to meet most of the folks there, um, which was nice, um, you know, because, you know, Jane, you know, tells me, oh, I'm on the, this account with this person and I'm on this account with that person. And, you know, so I got to meet them. I got to meet her boss. Um, so it was very cool. And, um, you know, so then, uh, then we, uh, you know, we left and, you know, she wasn't feeling a hundred percent and it was more self-inflicted than I think than a cold or anything else. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say a hundred percent it was that, but, you know, she had a, uh, you know, again, it was her first New Year's in New York, even though, you know, she's lived in New York for the last five years. Um, you know, usually when she was at school, she was home on break and nine times out of 10, either work New Year's Eve or New Year's Day or both, um, you know, when she worked at Urban Outfitters. Uh, so this was, like I said, the first time that she was there and, and same thing on her birthday, you know, she used to be home on her birthday when she was at school in New York because they were, you know, still on break. Um, so, you know, I just, you know, you know, she said the day before she said, you know, I made reservations. We're going to go to a place called Dos Caminos, which obviously is Mexican. And I said, wherever you want to go, I'm good. I said, if you want to try someplace you've never tried, we can do that. Um, but you know, whatever you want. And, you know, she wasn't feeling great. She's like, can we go to juniors and juniors is in Times Square and I will never refuse going to, uh, to juniors because, you know, there's a lot of different things you can get. Obviously cheesecake is one thing. Um, but you know, they have these potato pancakes, which I think I told you before, potato latkes or what we call them. And we kind of confused the guy, uh, who was taking our order, the waiter, because he's, he didn't know what a latke was. <laughs> so I, you know, that, which was funny in itself. So, um, you know, so we had those and Jane had matzo ball soup and, um, which she absolutely loves from there. And then, um, she wasn't feeling great. So we didn't get cheesecake there. And I was glad because I knew she was only going to eat a bite or two and then I'd have to eat the rest. And, and again, not like it's trouble to eat the rest, but you know, a piece of the cheesecake from there is not, um, low in calories. So, um, well, I would have gladly eaten, you know, half of a piece of cheesecake. I didn't want to eat you know, nine tenths of a piece of a cheese of cheesecake. So Liz had told me, you know, you know, please get cheesecake for Jacob and I. And I thought, okay, I don't know how that's going to travel, but sure. Um, so I did that and, um, Jane didn't even finish her latka. So, um, you know, I brought that home for Jacob and, um, but one thing that I love at juniors is, you know, they bring for the latkes for the potato pancakes, they bring out applesauce and sour cream. Sour cream I don't care about, but the applesauce they have there, and I'm, I'm guessing they make it there, it is so good that, 
you know, I, I ended, that's, that's what basically, <laughs> that was my dessert. And, um, it is just so good. So, you know, so now I'm full. I had a sandwich, I had a potato latke and I had uh, both my applesauce and most of Jane's. I think she had, she might've eaten a bite or two of it. And, um, you know, and then it was basically time to go. I had a, my train was leaving a little after nine. Uh, so we walked down, um, I think we walked down 7th Avenue, Jane said, because we walked past, um, HL Group has two offices, one over on Madison, which are the offices, and then they have the one on, again, I think it was 7th, where um, they have like inventory for um, the, you know, they send out, uh, you know, uh, products from their uh uh, you know, beauty stuff. They have the beauty uh, products there from the different companies that they represent and fashion stuff as well. You know, they might, uh, someone may uh, need a, a piece, a sweater, a whatever, whatever the fashion folks have, you know, for a photo shoot. So they borrow it from, you know, HL has it and they, you know, HL sends it out and then the the other people have to send it back once they're done. Obviously the beauty stuff, you send it out, it doesn't come back. And and that was one of Jane's reasons for wanting to do beauty over fashion, even though, you know, she likes fashion, just not as much as beauty. Um, you know, so we walked past there. She showed me that where that was, which that's just in a great location. And speaking with her today, and today is the 8th of January, um, she actually started out the day there. So when she starts out the day at that office, uh, it's a little bit easier. She takes a different subway train and that station while both are on Wall Street, both stations, she, the, the subway that she took today is just at the other end of the street that she lives on. So it's much closer. Uh, you know, it's only like a two block walk as opposed to two blocks and then four blocks down Wall Street past the exchange to uh, to Broadway. Um, so she was at that station today and she also likes it because there's a Pret-a-Mange uh, that is uh, on her way from the train uh, to the office. So she got oatmeal, which she loves, uh, from there. Um, but, you know, so we went to, we, we, you know, we went over to, uh, uh, to Penn station as we continued down the, you know, to our walk to the station. And, um, you know, I said, Jane, I said, we need a selfie. I said, we need a, we need a picture of us. I got to post something. And every time we came to a red light, I'm, I'm like, come on, there's, there's all sorts of lights I can, tell all sorts of lights. So there's all sorts of signs up and around. I said, it's so bright. Let's just take one. There's got to be a great drop. She's like, dad, the light's going to change. We're, you know, there's too many people here. So when we got down and we were near MSG, we took a selfie and, um, I'll put, <laughs> I'll put that on the uh, show notes page as well. Um, and then we went and we sat in the, uh, in the Amtrak lounge there. Um, at Penn Station until my train was ready to go. And I realized a few days after that we were sitting in that lounge at 8.45 p.m. And that is the time Jane was born. Um, you know, when she was, uh, when Liz was pregnant, uh, you know, with Jacob, uh, Jacob actually came very quickly. And, you know, the nurses said, well, you know, because, you know, he came out so quickly, <laughs> if you get pregnant again, you know, the second you feel like, you're, you're ready to go. You got to get to the hospital because you know, that part that kid will come out faster. And sure enough, when, uh, when Jane was born, you know, uh, she said something, Liz said something to me, we were eating dinner, you know, back in 1997, we were eating dinner and she said, you know, I think my water just broke. I said, call your mom, let's go. We got to go. And she's like, I don't think it's it. It's, you know, I'm not due, you know, I know I'm due today, but I, I just, I don't feel anything. I don't feel any contractions. I don't feel this. I'm like, just call them and get them over here and let's go. And it was a good thing because um, <laughs> when we're in the car going to the hospital, we get to the hospital uh, back in 1997. And, um, you know, the nurse said, oh, I'm going to need your help. And I'm, I'm holding and changing the tubes of blood that, you know, Liz had to, they had to take some blood. I had to do that while the nurse was doing something else. And, you know, 10 minutes after we're there, the doctor comes in, he looks, he puts on gloves and the nurse said, aren't you going to, aren't you going to wash your hands? He says, there's no time for that. And Jane came out. Um, so, uh, so it was very quick. Um, 
And, uh, and I'm guessing since it was quick, it was pretty painless, uh, although I, Liz would probably disagree. Liz, Liz did not get drugs on either, from, uh, either uh, delivery, so, so uh, you know, I'd have to ask her. I, 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 hopefully she doesn't remember if it did hurt. Um, you know, so I mentioned to her, like I said, when we were sit- the other day, uh, after I, I realized we were sitting in that Amtrak lounge, and and it's not a very cushy lounge. Don't 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 have visions of uh, an elaborate place. It's just basically a place that's roped off that has plastic seats with vinyl cushions on them. Most of the seats are cracked. Um, it's just a place that you can wait. And uh, you know, actually, I I got a Starbucks because it was Jane's birthday, and she gets a free drink on her birthday. And I was a little thirsty, and so I had a drink. But um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure it was iced tea or mop water. Um, so I didn't drink at all. And, uh, you know, I said goodbye to Jane and, uh, made my way down, got on the train and, uh, you know, got to Philadelphia, got on the SEPTA regional rail. And, um, I was surprised how empty it was. Now I know it was, you know, I was on, uh, it was 11, a little after 11, uh, on a Thursday night, you know, I, I, it just was, it was pretty empty. Uh, I was kind of surprised cause I'd been on train around that time you know, week or two before. And, you know, it was, you know, there were a lot more people on. And again, maybe it was because it was before Christmas. Um, and now obviously it's after New Year's. Uh, so, you know, I got to Swarthmore, I get off and somebody asks me if I needed help getting somewhere. I said, no, I said, I'm, you know, I just want to record a video. And I shot a video at the train station and another one along the way, actually another couple along the way uh, that I may or may not try and edit. And, uh, again, like I said last time in the last episode, I want to do more video. Um, so I started, you know, I just started shooting it and, um, you know, maybe I'll put it together. And I, I walked home from the station, which was, um, you know, it was a nice night to walk. It wasn't bad. And I, it, again, it just, the timing with the bus didn't work out. So, you know, I figured why wait for the bus? I could walk home and be home or almost home by the time the bus goes by, um, which was the case. Um, so it was a very successful trip. I didn't, um, the only thing that I obviously had help with was getting back to the station. Uh, you know, Jane was with me. She walked over there because she was going to get on the subway, which, uh, left from the same station, obviously. And, um, so I don't know how that would have been, but I, you know, I, I'm always so happy that I could do it on my own and get there. And, um, I, I don't even think I asked that many people for directions. You know, obviously in the state, in the train station, I asked the person where the men's room was, uh, outside of Penn station. I asked what the road was in front. Um, otherwise I tried to use either the app on my phone or just guessing. Um, and I, and it came out okay. One guy did help me when I was walking down one of the streets because, uh, you had to leave the sidewalk and step into the street because something was blocking the sidewalk and there was scaffolding up. So people were coming the other way through the scaffolding. And he said, uh, why don't you grab my arm and we'll go around this and, and I'll get you where you need to go. And, and so that guy helped me and that was nice. For the most part though, I did it without too much difficulty. Um, and I was happy, you know, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm always happy that, you know, when I can do something like that and, um, you know, it just, it just makes me feel good about it. And, uh, you know, we're trying to tell a couple of the folks who were in our, uh, NFB chapter, the Keystone chapter, um, you know, look, you can do this stuff on your own. You know, you just have to gain your confidence. And, um, so hopefully she will, uh, this one person that I'm thinking about. And, you know, there's just, you know, I, I always, I always, as I've said before, I've always thought this is, you know, I know what, you know, when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, that sometimes, you know, I went to New York and back on my own, you know, did I probably do some silly things? Did people look at me funny? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty positive that happened. Uh, did I get a lot of people staring at me at, uh, at B&H photo? Uh, probably because, Hey, look, here's that guy over there that can't see is looking at cameras. Um, whatever, I don't care. Um, you know, you, you know, if I want to, if I, it's easy to order the stuff online, obviously. Um, the reason to go is to feel it, to see if I can operate it once I get it. 
you know, you can, somebody can tell me that, but until I play around with it and feel it and, you know, say, okay, here's what I have to do for this. And here's what I have to do for that. And that's why I was a little disappointed that no one helps me in the, uh, the pro audio section, because, uh, you know, I would definitely love to know, you know, if I could, you know, use some of those things. Um, so maybe next time when I go up, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but it was a great trip and I was happy that I was there. And even though Jane didn't feel a hundred percent, um, it was nice to spend some time with her. So I knew she didn't go home and have, have, have ramen for dinner on her birthday. Uh, although she didn't have any cake either with me. Uh, but it was nice. I was glad to get up there. And, uh, I hope you've enjoyed listening to, uh, my, uh, another trip to New York city and episode 56 of the, I can't see you podcast. Again, if you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, uh, give me a call, leave a voicemail, area code 646-926-6350. Also any kind of comments you think the podcast sucks, let me know. Um, you could also reach out via email. I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. Remember, I can't see you.com has all of the episodes if you've missed them and you don't want to go back and get them on your phone and also has the show notes. I can't see you is I C A N T C U seven letters. Sounds like a lot more. Uh, please rate review. And if you haven't already subscribed, because that helps us grow. And again, I appreciate you listening to episode 56 of the I can't see you podcast. My name is David at David Benj on all the socials. Have a great afternoon or evening or morning, whatever time of day it is, just make it a good one. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast. Follow David on Twitter. He is at David Benj.